During September, apart from playing some of the usual suspects and small bits of other games, I felt like I was playing the waiting game. The first new release I was picking up since God Wars Future Pass was coming out at the end of September, and since I missed playing new stuff, I was really excited and spent most of the month anticipating that fateful day. But I couldn't just play nothing until then, so I did my best to get into games I've been trying to complete throughout the year, along with some DLC and demos to satisfy the need to play something new. With a mix of various series I love and new ones I hope will keep me interested, here are the JRPGs I played in September. I've been waiting for a while, but I'm pleased to say Persona 2's story has finally hooked me. After a tension-filled time dungeon and another that revealed a big secret about what was going on in the story, I find myself ready to play more and find out what happens next, rather than just playing it to finish it. I'm really glad, as the slow pacing was starting to make me wonder if Persona 2 really is as great as everyone says it is, but I think I'm starting to get it much more now. The only thing slowing me down at the moment is the amount of random battles popping up, but since feeling like I have a reason to do them now, I'm finding more enjoyment in them too, and intend on playing as much as I can on the go to finally get through it to see what happens. I'm only a few chapters into Blue Reflection thanks to it not showing up in the Australian PSN store, but after getting it off the US one, I am loving it so far. I had hopes for it to be a Magical Girl Persona game, and that's pretty accurate so far, partnered in with some unique characters with interesting backstories that I genuinely want to learn more about. It's also the first Gus game I've played in a while, and I've been quickly reminded how beautiful the games they make are, with each character being aesthetically gorgeous, along with a soundtrack that I want to throw my money at. Its turn-based system is also reminiscent of the kinds I've liked from World of Final Fantasy and Child of Light, so I'm itching to go into battle again after making this video for this post. It's refreshing how much I am enjoying this title so far, and I hope I keep feeling this throughout the whole experience. I only played the demo of Eve's 8, but completing it this time round has gotten me very intrigued about the series, as it was a fun adventure experience. I played the same demo in Japanese in March and didn't complete it thinking the language barrier was making me miss out on some stuff, and I tend to think this was a good decision as I found a lot more cool stuff in my run through this time, such as cooking, climbing, and the joy of understanding what's going on. I enjoyed it so much that I even briefly considered if my decision to buy Blue Reflection was the right one, and after playing bits of both, I do think I made the right decision for me personally, but Eve's 8 looks very, very good good as an adventure-filled JRPG so far. My time at the Assassin's Festival feels brief and far away weeks after playing it, although I do look back at the experience fairly fondly. Using stealth to fight in Final Fantasy XV was an interesting new way to take down foes, especially with some of Prompto's one-liners killing it whenever Noctis jumped out of garbage bins. The Prince of Garbage! Can it! My own experience was let down by some bugs, although I saw on Twitter that they've apparently fixed these in the latest update, so if they were the only thing keeping you from trying this expansion, perhaps this is a good time to play it. It almost wouldn't be a JRPGs I played post in 2017 without a mention of Persona 5. As usual, I am still playing and enjoying that wonderful JRPG a lot. I have two playthroughs going at the moment, including my English one, where I just finished the fourth dungeon and I'm finishing a bunch of confidant relationships to help get my platinum trophy. There's also my Japanese save, where I'm making slow but sure progress and I'm pretty much at the start of the first dungeon now, after enjoying Ryuji's Japanese voice actor deliver the Japanese dialogue of one of my favorite Ryuji moments in Persona 5. The main thing I noticed in my English playthrough of Persona 5 this month is how fast I am running out of in-game money in easy mode compared to safety. I know the modifiers for safety mode are rather generous compared to the other modes, and I'm definitely noticing what it's like to not be rolling in a mountain of cash after every battle now and having to take care of my in-game money spending habits a bit more. It's a new challenge to enjoy, and although I'll be giving some of my spare gaming time to other games in October, I have no doubts I'll be back to my confidants soon. 
A game I both played more, and yet probably should have played even more of this month, was Kingdom Hearts 1.5 HD, as I probably could have played more of it in the limited time I had at home rather than trying DLC demos and doing platinum runs. However, I'm pretty sure I did spend more time in Kingdom Hearts this month, as I definitely appreciated it more, especially after I entered the underwater world that was one of my favorite areas when I first played it. There's something about Kingdom Hearts that is timeless, with its cartoony animation and Disney characters all putting a smile on my face, and the gameplay being not perfect but fun enough. I don't know where I'll get time for more Kingdom Hearts with Blue Reflection as my current focus and more JRPGs coming out, but I certainly wouldn't mind getting more time with it. I really wanted to try get as many Nier Automata characters as possible from the current collaboration Instant Oalis, with 2B being the only one I have so far. However, aside from playing a lot to get gems and other currencies to get them, I wasn't having very much luck at all, which made me briefly consider putting money into the game, something I haven't done in a smartphone game yet, by the way. I thought this until I saw the prices and came back to my senses. Since I've been getting my Japanese study fix from Persona 5 recently, I don't know if I'll be jumping into Sinoalis anytime soon, even if I'm interested in learning more about its characters, as I don't want to tempt myself too much into the dangerous world of smartphone in-game purchases. I'm on to Chapter 2 of Tales of the Rays and I'm still thoroughly enjoying it so far, with my strategy of getting introduced to Tales games I don't know seemingly working, as I've been interested in checking out at least the ones in my backlog. However, I did have a small realization this month that halted my progress in it a little. A lot of my smartphone gaming time could probably be replaced by my handhelds, and with my new appreciation of Persona 2's story, this did decrease my smartphone gaming time by a bit. I have, however, been using Tales of the Rays XP levels when I get little moments at work, I can press the auto battle buttons and get some XP for when I come back to it. While it's not the most respectable way to level up, I feel nice knowing that when I come back to the game after playing Persona 2, I can hopefully make my way to its newer chapters a little more easily. I made a mistake last month and accidentally left Persona Q off my list of JRPGs I played in August, so thankfully I played it just a little this month and can include it here. Unfortunately though, there's not much to say other than I've started the Persona 4 route of Persona Q and Nanako is cooking my breakfast. This is another one I have in Japanese that I'm going slowly with, although as a sucker for adorable art styles, I would definitely like to play through this before Persona Q2 happens, so I have some handle of the gameplay and the story. I've got an incredibly long way to go with Persona Q, but it's pretty cute so far. Since I've only just started Blue Reflection at the time of making this post, it's hard to think about what I'll be playing this month. I have had a cool spanner thrown in the works though that will probably influence my decisions. Since it's my birthday this month, my boyfriend was kind enough to help pitch in and help me buy a Nintendo Switch, which just arrived at my place an hour before recording this. Depending on when I finish Blue Reflection, I could play Knights of Azure 2 around the end of the month to get a really good amount of use out of my Switch. However, Dot Hack GU is very high on my list of games to get, and it comes out on November 1st. I prefer to keep overlap out of new games as much as possible because I just don't manage it very well, so I may stick to Kingdom Hearts and Persona 2 if I don't think it'll work out, and probably fill in times with other games and free experiences like the new Final Fantasy XV story update or the Comrades expansion coming out at the end of October. But my plan is to finish the pretty magical turn-based world of Blue Reflection, and that gives me plenty of hope that October will be another good month of playing JRPGs. Thank you for watching this video, let me know in the comments below what you played in September and what you will play in October. Also, if you have a Nintendo Switch, let me know what you're playing on it and what JRPGs you recommend, because I would like to get some. You can like and share this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to my channel for more JRPG content like this, and ring that bell to get notifications on whenever I post so you don't miss a thing. 
Check out the blog at jrpgjungle.blogspot.com. I do everything I do here, but in written form. And also this week, I did a little post about the takeout drinks at the Square Enix Cafe that I had a lot of fun writing. So please check that out. And you can also find me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, all at jrpgjungle. And until next time, thank you. Bye.